Congressman Bissara, welcome back to the program. Then I'd always good to be with you. Thank you so much, sir. And uh, well, you're you're back here home in California. Um, the um, obviously a lot of stuff going on in Washington, a lot of votes. Uh, you, but you're also involved in supporting the president for his, his reelection. Yes. Um, how do you see how do you see the election shaping up at this point? The Republicans still unable to decide who they want to run for president. The Republicans moving further and further to the right because they are captive to the Tea Party. And the Republicans making it very clear to Latinos, to, to women, to seniors who uh, rely on Medicare and Social Security that uh, their vote isn't as important to them. Uh, and yet uh, people like Jeb Bush and Karl Rove are out there talking about uh, what they think. Uh, Jeb Bush, in fact, said, I, I'm a conservative, uh, but I just don't relate to what's being said now about contraception and immigration. Uh, so there are people in the party who know that the key constituencies, such as women, Latinos, and, and other groups as well, are being pushed away. What's happening? Is that uh, just ideology triumphing, uh, being triumphant over any kind of pragmatism? There is a critical minority in the Republican Party. Uh, the operative word here is minority. They're now deeply within the minority that would like to see the party and their candidates move away from this uh, very acerbic, very... Uh, harmful talk about going after Im immigrants, going after women, going after Supreme Court Justice Sonia Sotomayor, all those things that lose your votes because people will remember that. Whether they can prevail at some point, it looks like this is not going to be the year that those voices of reason within the Republican Party uh, have a chance to surface. Uh, but I think what will happen is what happened with Pete Wilson in California when he ran for governor using anti-immigrant rhetoric. They'll learn the hard way. You, you mean this will be an incentive for a lot of Latinos who perhaps have been uh, passive to, to get involved? Uh, yes, and, and also I think it'll be a, a good reason for a lot of Republicans post-election mm -hmm. to say we got to go in a different direction because uh, we can't alienate a growing sector of, of the vote in America the way we have uh, with regard to Latinos. And I, I think there are enough voices in the Republican Party that would like to head in a different direction. There were Republicans at one point who were for comprehensive immigration reform. And the DREAM Act. And the DREAM Act. Right. We had co-sponsors of the legislation who were Republican. Right. It's just that either they're in hiding or they've been booted out of the party. And um, as, as you, now I hear a lot of uh, chatter coming out of Washington. Uh, Democrats basically, uh, I think, maybe cheering a little bit before the, the voting in November actually has taken place, feeling that these candidates, the Republican candidates, are somewhat weakened or, or have, uh, in fact, and maybe undermined each other to such a degree that they're not competitive in November. Is this building a sense of overconfidence, you think? I, I hope not. Uh, I am certainly not overconfident. I, in fact, uh, think of it as being an underdog. These are difficult times. Uh, some issues out of our control, like the speculative increase in gas prices having nothing to do with supply and demand. Uh, we don't have people uh, waiting in long gas lines at gas stations to try to get gasoline because we have enough supply. But the price keeps going up. Why? Because there's a lot of speculation going on in Wall Street and in the, within OPEC, and that's driving up the price of gasoline. All those things should worry anyone who's running for office. And so I, I think, uh, maybe it's from my own background, that uh, you always take these things and think of it as an underdog because you have to win. And in order to win, you got to prove yourself always more than the next guy. So I, I, when you hear these, uh, the, the GOP candidates, and, and uh, certainly there is a, uh, uh, a real desire to replace the president that's clear, that's motivating a lot of voters as well. Um, but what is the, the alternative vision that's out there, or at least how do, how do you interpret that? And for the supporters of the president, what is, because at some level it's I support the president or I don't support the president, but what is, what is the alternative vision of the Obama administration? It seems more and more that there are two trajectories in the Republican uh, primaries as to why one of them should become president. The Romney campaign would like to say, we need to change ships, and because uh, we'll do the economy better. But the more you probe Romney's own record, you find that when he talks about jobs, it's outsourcing jobs and not creating jobs in America. When you find out how he made his money, you realize that he took advantage of a lot of those tax loopholes that we probably should have closed a long time ago because people are ripping off the country and taxpayers. When you hear the other message, the one that you hear a lot from Rick Santorum, it's the cultural wars mm -hmm. all over again. Mm -hmm. You know beating a woman down for using contraception, uh, going after immigrants because 
there. Their kids are here graduating from our high schools and they don't belong here. Um, it seems like it's that same fight that we saw in the 80s, uh, mostly in the 80s, early 90s, where Republicans try to win votes by appealing to guns, uh, against or for guns, against gays, and uh, against uh, abortion. And so we'll see what happens. But at some point, uh, I think the Republicans are going to recognize that what concerns people most today is jobs, jobs, and jobs. And uh, let's talk about jobs because this evening you're giving a speech on green jobs. And of course, uh, uh, the whole issue of global warming and uh, the, the uh, uh, dependence on oil and all that has become completely politicized, so that it seems like it's just another political argument as opposed to being a scientific or economic argument. So are green jobs real? Um, uh, you hear a lot of uh, critiques that this is just all smoke and mirrors and these jobs don't really exist. Is, it, is this a real new part of the economy? And not only are they real, they pay more than today's jobs do. They pay more because they are in a new industry, uh, it's cutting edge, and it uses a lot of technology. And all that adds value to the type of work that's done. Uh, the problem, of course, is that we have some folks, while we're trying to get the economy to accelerate in its recovery, there's some folks who have the foot on the brake who keep trying to stall the president's progress. But green jobs, if, if we're smart, green jobs become the new best thing to move the country forward. It's the uh, game changer for us in our economy where we recognize that we invented uh, the technology for wind energy, but yet it's China that produces most of the parts that you use to build these turbines. We invented the electronic battery uh, that is used for electronic vehicles, but they're manufactured today in Korea. Mm -hmm. And so the more we harness the innovation that's come from America and use it to make it in America, the quicker we're going to start discovering how to get those good paying jobs that are greener than what we've had before. And so it is the future, but you have to be willing to make investments. And and in the meantime, though, uh, we have this reality, right, that there is no alternative fuel to petroleum, uh, possibly natural gas, but there's no distribution mechanism to make it really practical and, and large scale. So w what should people think about? Should they think about a 20-year horizon until we are able to uh, take some of these very early scientific developments and turn them into technologies? Or is this a 50-year kind of window and, and that's just what it is and, and until then we have to import the oil? The president, I believe, has it right when he says that we have to have an all-of-the-above approach at solving our energy problems and moving for, towards a, a, a real sensible but far-sighted energy policy. That simply means recognize where we have energy potential, the fuels that we have today. Some of them are, are dirty, coal, uh, fossil, all the fossil fuels. But we have, we have them. We, in fact, we have more oil rigs right now working to produce, to bring out oil, uh, 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 bring up this, the oil today than any other country, every other country in the world combined. 